first of all, I just wanted to start with some basics of the radial filter and the graduated filter. So both of these filters are meant to help you make adjustments to a certain area of your photo. So presets are really designed to make adjustments to the entire photo. And these other adjustment tools over here, the brush, which we're not going to talk about much today, the radial filter and the graduated filter are meant to really make targeted adjustments to a specific area of your photo. So that's when, when you would want to use them. Say you want to brighten a little bit of your photo, darken a little bit of your photo. Um, you'll see how I use these in a few other ways as well, but they're really for targeted adjustments to your photo, not global adjustments. Um, that's, there are some exceptions to that, and I may, I may show you that a little bit too. So first of all, where to find them? They're over here in this little panel right above the, the basic panel um, over here on the right hand side of Lightroom. So this um, rectangle right here is the graduated filter. The circle right here is the radial filter. And kind of like their names, the radial filter, you'll see that the adjustments are round or radial. <laughs> and the graduated filter is going to make a little bit more linear adjustments. And, and I'll show you how those all, those all work. So if I just click over here on the radial filter and then come onto my photo, you can see that I am making an adjustment in a circle. You can see that this is the adjustment and it's being made in a circle. So if I delete that, let's come over here and click on the um, graduated filter. I'm going to pull this down. You can see that it's being made with a series of lines in a linear fashion. Whoops, I accidentally made two there. Um, so these are more linear adjustments and they'll be more graduated. So let me show you. I'm just going to type O and turn on the overlay. Um, here and you can see I didn't turn my photo red but the red shows where the adjustment is being made and you can see that there's more of the adjustment up here at the top and it gradually fades to no adjustment at all and I can pull this and that will make most of the photo is now covered with that adjustment and it's fading away at the very bottom so um, there are just two different ways they're a little bit different method of, of doing a similar thing. Um, how I decide which one I'm going to use really depends on the photo. I would say with portraits, I am mainly using the radial filter um, just because I'm targeting maybe either just the, um, the subject of my portrait or maybe just I'm targeting the face and the head and those tend to be um, more radial or round. I'm usually using kind of a more radial, a radial adjustment with that. Um, where I use filters a lot more often is with landscapes and um, or even with maybe a portrait where I just want to target the outside edges of my photo a little bit and so I'll use then maybe a graduated filter for that. So that's kind of what I choose or how I choose. Now with, um, let's see, a couple of other things. Whenever you create a filter on your image, you're gonna get stuck with one of these pins. And it's this little round dot. It's white on the edges, black in the middle. Um, if it's not selected, then um, let's see, let's just grab a new over here. If it's not selected, it will just be a gray round circle. And then when I click on it, it turns to the white with the black insides. And that when it's selected and I, I can make adjustments over here, I can change things. Um, when it's not selected, I can't. So just a simple thing to know about that. These are called pins. If I want to hide my pins, so as you'll see in a couple of these, I'll use more than one radial filter. And if they're close together or they're bothering you at any point, you can type H and that will hide the pin. And then type H again, that will bring the pin back. So it might be just helpful to know that as you're working with filters. Um, I'm going to delete this one off of my photo. 
um, and I just tap the delete key while it's selected to delete it. And that's all I do for that. Um, when Lightroom 6 was introduced, they introduced another feature that you can use with radial and graduated filters, and that's the brush tool. So let's come over here. I'm going to click on the radial filter. Let's drag a filter onto this image. And you'll see that right now I've still got my overlay showing, and it's showing me that all my adjustments are being made to the outside of this photo. I'm going to turn that off for just a second so that you can actually see what's, what's happening. But let's say I want to really darken the exposure or the outside edges, which that's way too much, but I just I want you to see it. And then let's say that I wanted to remove some of that off of some areas. So here's my brush. I'm actually going to turn my overlay back on. I'm going to come down here and choose Erase. So I've, cho I've chosen the brush with my filter activated, and now I'm choosing Erase. And then I could actually remove some of that darkness that I applied from my subject so that it's just targeting the outside area. So this is a, a way that you can even more um, really zone in and make sure that the adjustment is being applied only where you want it. And that's really, that's a nice feature. I think that's Lightroom 6 and above, if I remember correctly. <laughs> Sometimes they blend together, but I'm pretty sure that that was a Lightroom 6 feature. So you might see me using that as well today. Um, I think those are kind of the basics. If there are any other things that I'm missing or that you think I need to add to tell you about, or if I forgot something, I'll try to remember to talk to you about it when we get going here. So I'm just going to, I'm going to start with this photo from scratch. Um, two of these images are from one of our members here, Perla Salazar. Um, she has beautiful images. We've got a couple of hers, of hers, and then I have one of my very own, a landscape image, because I wanted to show you how this, um, how I use graduated filters on landscapes. So, anyway, those are the, fil the images that we're going to be using today. So with this first one, I'm actually going to come down here and I'm going to choose um, Angelic from the Bella Baby presets. Angelic is one of my very favorites, and I love what it does to this image. I'll turn on before and after if you want to kind of see the before and after while I'm editing. I think with vertical images, that's you can still see pretty well what the image looks like. So I'm going to choose um, a radial filter. And one of the first things that I'm going to do, I just want to brighten just the shadows here on her face just a little bit. So I'm going to choose Baby Exposure Brighten here. I'm just going to drag a radial filter over her face. And already I remembered one of the things that I forgot to tell you about the radial filter. So by default, when I drag a circle, and this I, I will preface this by saying it seems backwards to me. I, I don't know why, but when I drag a circle, um, the adjustment right now is being applied, and you can see it's being applied to everywhere outside of the circle. So I want to change that because I want it to be applied inside the circle. So in order to get it inside the circle, I have to check this invert box. And now you can see that the red is covering her face. I'm going to turn that off so I can actually see the adjustment. And I'm just going to bring it and have it be kind of narrow because really I just wanted it to mostly apply to that those shadows just on the side of her face. So you can see I've just got a small radial filter just over targeting kind of the shadows on the side of her face right there. Okay, um, I'm going to actually, just because I noticed this, I'm going to grab a brush really quick and I'm going to choose um, this smooth as a baby's bottom. I'm going to make my brush small and I can see that she has goosebumps in this photo so I'm just going to soften those a little bit and also just soften a little bit of her face here. So, and if I want to do it again a little bit more on her arm, I'm just going to choose new and I'm going to come down here and just brush it on her just a little bit there. Okay, I said we wouldn't do too much brushes. That's all I'm going to do. I'm going to get done. 
Now, one of the things that I really love about this photo that actually drew me to it is all of the texture in the background. And so I think in this photo, we kind of need to enhance that. And so I'm gonna do that with a radial filter. So I'm going to click on my radial filter tool again, make sure it's showing new. I'm gonna drag a radial filter. And by default, it's just using the last one that I used which is smooth as a baby's bottom. I don't really want that, but I'm just gonna leave it on here for a second to adjust my filter. And I'm gonna put this filter over her because I, where she's at is where I don't want the filter to apply. I'm gonna choose the Color Lux um, Grit Brush. And you can see what that did. That just automatically really darkened and popped that background and um, really added a, or just emphasized that texture even more. So one thing I'm noticing, I'm going to type the O key so I can see my overlay. I do this a lot. I know it adds red to your photo and I'm perfectly fine with that. That helps me see where it's showing and where it isn't. And um, I'm going to choose my brush and I'm going to choose erase just like I did before. I'm gonna make my brush a little bit smaller because I don't want quite as much, as much as I want to emphasize the background texture, I love her hair and I, but I don't really want to pop her hair quite as much. So I'm just going to paint off or paint the, remove the grit brush, I guess, from her hair. If I turn off my overlay, I just tap the O key to do that. I'm gonna make my brush really small and just get this little curl out here so that it's not affecting those curls as much. And I really love, I really just did a preset and two radial filters and I love the, the change that that makes to this image and how that really pops that background and makes it really stand out it's just kind of fun. Um, I'll turn off my filters here so you can see the before and after of what we did to this image. Just simple, beautiful. It was a beautiful image to begin with. So let's go now down. I'm going to try to, I'm going to check the questions, see if there's any questions. Hey everybody, it's nice to see you. It's so weird being here in my house and knowing that there are people actually watching me. So hello everyone. Okay, we're gonna to move to this next image. And it's a landscape. I'm gonna not show you the before and after, maybe until the end. Um, with this one, um, I'm gonna choose one of the Bomb Pop presets because how can you not choose to really show off all that gorgeous color? So there's so many I could use here. Um, I'm gonna choose, I don't know, I'm going to choose Berry Frappe. I don't know how you say that. Berry Frappe. I, I like that. I like what that does. That makes, that's a lot, creates a lot of drama and a lot of color pop in this image. It's really pretty. One thing that I notice when I click on this image is that I don't want quite as much drama on her. Okay. I love the drama that it adds and the color pop it adds out here, but over her, I just want maybe a little bit less. I think some of the tones in her hair are getting a little bit lost. So I'm going to do that with a radial filter. I'm going to click on this radial filter tool. My grip wash is selected. So this is not probably going to be pretty, um, but I'm going to drag a radial filter over her. You can choose what you want to add first, but Generally, that's not how my mind, mind works. So maybe that's how your mind works, and that's awesome. I'm going to invert it because I want it to apply to her. Now, I don't obviously want the grit brush, so I'm just going to double click. If I double click over here on this word effect, it's just going to reset everything. So right now, I have nothing actually being applied. I am going to open up my shadows just a little bit. Um, reduce my contrast a teeny bit. So there's a little bit less contrast on her. And then maybe just open up my blacks a little bit. Let's see. Now I'm going to show you what it 
looks like without the filter and now what it looks like with the filter. So you can see how this radial filter just, um, I didn't even use any exposure. I didn't brighten her necessarily. I just opened up the shadows a little bit and it helps keep the emphasis on her and, and bring back all the detail that might've been lost with that preset. So very often that's one of the things that I'm doing with my radial filters and my graduated filters is maybe the global preset did something to my image that I need to correct. And, you know, that's just the nature of global presets. They're applying the same effect to the entire photo. And so sometimes there might be an area where you don't want quite as much of that to happen. So that's one of the reasons that I use radial filters often is maybe to correct something that um, happened when I applied a, a preset to the image. So, um, Let's come over here. This image with this, I'm gonna we're gonna talk a little bit more just about graduated filters. Now, this image looks really kind of blah, <laughs> actually, and hopefully we'll change that when we um, add some things to this. But this image was taken while on a hike that I swear I was gonna die on. We were hiking up to the top of a mountain, and it was pretty much straight up. So this was on one of the breaks <laughs> where I had stopped hiking and I just needed to not hike for a few minutes. And so anyway, that's where I took this. So um, I'm going to start with, and I'm going to add floor to this. This is from the Enchanted Garden collection. And I like what that does. I am going to adjust the white balance of this just a little bit. So I'm going to come down here. And I'm going to add a little bit more red to this and pull down my yellows just a little bit. I think it adds a little bit too much yellow. There we go. I think that's about right. Okay. So while we were hiking, we actually hiked half of this hike in the pouring rain. So the sky had a lot of drama, but you can't really see that very well in this image. There is mostly just a really blah looking sky. So I'm going to try to bring back some of the drama that um, I could see, you know, through the camera that just wasn't quite captured with my camera. So we're going to choose the um, graduated filter here. And I'm going to, we're going to do a couple of different filters here because one filter is just not going to do it. We're going to start with add drama. So here I chose it first, and I'm going to pull a graduated filter from the top down to the bottom. Okay. Now that's a little bit better. You can, you're starting to see a little bit more of the, of the sky and what the clouds actually look like. Um, so here is a little trick that I'm going to show you to just duplicate a filter that you already have drugged. So I've that's the wrong way to say that. That's bad grammar. I don't know what the right way is. Um, I'm just going to right click. I'm going to hover over the pin here. I'm going to right click on it. And one of the options that comes up is obviously to delete, but I can also duplicate. So I'm going to duplicate that radial filter. Okay. And you can see that that adds a little, even more drama to my sky here. One thing that I'm not loving that it added is a little bit of color here in the corners. So on this second one, I'm gonna turn on my overlay, I'm gonna turn on my brush, and I'm gonna choose erase. And I'm gonna make my brush ginormous. And I'm just going to, I don't know, maybe hover over the corner here and click. And maybe do the same over here. See if that helps a little bit. Yeah, that helps. That takes a little bit of the, the extra color that was coming in on the corners. That just removes it. Okay. So now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click new. We're going to add one more filter to the sky. And this is maybe cheating, but I'm going to use a filter that has been retired. It's called blue skies. You can do something very similar on your own if you need to do that, but I'm gonna click and I'm gonna drag 
to add a little bit of color to my sky. So those other two filters added some contrast, brought it back so that I could actually see the sky again. But this is going to help me add a little bit of color to my sky. And my sky is not blue. So um, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to click on the color box, the box next to color. When I click on it, I get all these different colors that I can choose. And I am going to choose kind of a more purpley, bluey color. And you'll see a preview as you click around. I mean, you can see what will happen if I choose something clear up there. I want to add a little bit more purpley blue to the clouds. And I think that's pretty good. I think that helps to see the, the drama of the clouds. You can see the, the haze still, but there is a definition um, between the two. And I like that a lot better. So let's click over here. I'm going to be turn those off. I'm going to show you my before and after. And you can see it's pretty dramatic, but really all we added here was a preset and a couple of graduated filters, three to be exact, with a few adjustments. And I can see I'm going to remove that spot. Yes, I have a spot on my camera sensor and I am forever removing it. You think I would just go get my camera sensor cleaned. That would be the smart thing to do, but I'm not always the smartest. So let's see. That looks pretty good. There we go. Yeah, hopefully you're all smarter than me. Anyway, hopefully this has been helpful. Hopefully it's helped you um, to figure out a little bit more how, how you can use these tools more effectively in your editing. Um, hopefully you've picked up a tip that, that will make things go faster or more smoothly or something new. Um, I'm not seeing any questions yet, but that doesn't mean there won't be. So um, please just feel free to keep asking your questions. If you saw me do something and you um, want me to explain it further or just have any questions about those tools or frankly, anything in Lightroom, please feel free to ask away in the comments and I will make sure to answer your questions. Thanks for joining me. This has been fun. I'll try to do these more often. I always forget that we have this cool feature here in the group that we can do and, and it's a great, great way to teach, a great way to learn. So I'll try to remember to do it more often. Thanks for, thanks for joining.